Hi YouTube, Mochismo Eugene, another video from Exit Strategy, welcome. I want to discuss to you guys about how a narcissist denies you access to yourself, thereby blocking your exit. If you remember when you were involved with these narcissists, I'm taking it that you're out of the, the relationships or the interaction with them and you're listening to this video. So you want to put things together in a big way. Even though you've been looking at videos, you've been listening to people that have come out of it as well, but something still remains inside of you that you can't really quite put your finger on as to how you stay in this thing so long. You try to rationalize it. You try to make sense out of the nonsense. And uh, you, you're really never going to make sense out of nonsense. Once you come to an understanding of what these people are, it is hard to grasp it. It is hard to comprehend it. But accepting it for what it is until you are able to better comprehend it is a great starting point. But I'm going to additionally give you a little bit more of an insight on why you're probably feeling that way. And I'm going to show you exactly why uh, you were in it as long as you were. One of the reasons why. Uh, you know, we, we didn't make this excuse outright, but subconsciously, this is what was happening. You were, in fact, aware that there was something not right with this relationship. That's a no brainer. You understood that this was not this 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 ended up not being what it appeared to be in the beginning. OK, you knew that or you began to see that based on the, the behavior or the chaos, the disagreements, the name calling and this and that. But what we often miss in the chaos was the, del the deliberate, the deliberate on purpose by the narcissist. We didn't understand that the arguments or the debates and disagreements we were having, we were the only one that was sincerely, authentically engaged in it. We were the only one taking the matter serious. The narcissist was taking it serious to the degree where they were afraid that they were gonna lose you as a supply. They wasn't afraid of losing you as a human being, as a person that they cared about. They only cared about you and your presence in their space because that medicated, you basically were the foster parent. They're basically an orphan. When you meet them, they're an orphan. They're an orphan because everyone who has adopted them they have realized that this person, sorry, the gimbal is doing this thing again. They realized very quick that they uh, it needed a charge, but it's probably 50%. It does it periodically. I don't know why. I haven't read the instructions. I never do, but I do apologize. I'm not starting it over. So anyway, the the, the they're a, they're like foster kids in 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 not to make anybody or trigger anybody to start feeling like some kind of way if you were a foster kid this is just an analogy but they're foster kids by choice they don't want to get with a parent or parents that are loving and caring uh to the degree where they want to just stay there with that parent the better the parent is to them the worse that they are to the parent that's what i'm trying to get across to you so back to case in point you were in a debate, you were in an argument, disagreement. You were the only one that really was truly concerned about a resolve, coming to a solution, figuring it out, figuring out how you guys can make this thing uh, work for the betterment of both of you. And so you were, the, you were met with some excuse as, for example, you would confront them and say, well, I think we need to talk about X, Y, Z. They would say, you know, not right now. I got a headache. Or they would give you a slew of excuses. And they would say, not in front of the kids. Can we talk about that some other time? And I got an appointment I got to go to. Or I got to meet up with so-and-so and so-and-so. Can we do it later? They will always snowball this over and over and over. Or uh, some would say that. Uh, that's stonewalling. I don't know if that's a correct term, but 
they would have actually put up a wall and pretend like they got something more pressing to do. Can we just put that off another time? And you're thinking at this point, if you're awakened and looking back, you say, uh, it was at a point where I had already heard that before, like, let's talk about it some other time. So you in your mind were saying, hmm, they're always making an excuse. Let's do this another time. And so you, if you're persistent like I am, you would continue to press and say, well, you know, you say it all the time. And they would say, not in front of the kids, can we do that later? And you would say, well, okay, let's go in the room and talk, or let's go outside and talk, let's go in the car and talk, let's go somewhere, let's go for a walk and talk about it. They will immediately emphasize something else that they need to do, or there will be some kind of other excuse they would give you to compound on top of not wanting to deal with this. No resolution. They don't want to resolve the problem. They want the problem to linger and to stay in the atmosphere because that chaos is what they feed off of and you guys already understand that but i'm trying to show you the intricate <clears throat> one of the intricate ways that they continue to uh, and, uh, block access to you they block the access to you they block your access to you is what i'm saying when they're doing this you don't ever have a moment of clarity in many in many cases to really introspect so they're they're blocking your entrance to you so you're not to go you're not able to go in and introspect introspect meaning going within yourself and to take the ample amount of time needed to really assess everything involved. On the surface, you, you already know that this relationship is going nowhere. You probably already told them, you know, give them their walking papers like I did. Say, you, you need to leave, you know, something is not working out. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but this is not going to work out. And it seems like to you, it, when you say this, you don't want to feel like, oh, you just like don't want to play, uh, play house anymore. And so a lot of times you'll go back and renege off of that, uh, that boundary that you've already gave them the walking papers and you'll say, or they will meet you, but you know, what's going on? We can work this out. I don't know why you're being so, you know, going overboard or why you're getting so upset about this. So they'll reel you back in and you'll find yourself not being able to go through and carry through with that, um, that ultimatum you've given them. So this works in some instances too, but back to what my point was, when you say, uh, let's go for a walk and let's go talk about this, they will give you excuses, excuses, excuses. And so you, you don't realize that they're blocking your entrance to you because you can't see you as an individual person, what you brought to this relationship. As I said before, you know that the relationship's not going to work. You already didn't come to that conclusion. But they are blocking your access, the access to you, where you're able to see unequivocally, unanimously, that you alone are in this relationship. There is nobody else in this relationship. You see a human being on the other side, looks like a human being. It somewhat behaves like a human being, but you see and you kind of label it as, oh, they just are selfish. It is deeper than that because what they're doing, you know that they are selfish. That's a subtitle. They're narcissists, but you don't know it yet, but they are selfish. You can't gain access to you because they're continually doing different types of things like uh, evading, avoiding, deflecting. So you're managing them more than you're able to gain access to you. So you're constantly, even when they leave out of the house, you're constantly thinking about that thing that you wanted to discuss, that matter that you wanted to resolve. I hope this is making sense. So you're never able to give attention to what you need to give attention to, which is access to you. You can't spend the time, even though you've been in the house probably all day and they've been at work, you you have this subconscious matter in your mind of them because it's you wanting this matter to be fixed. You want to bridge this gap. So that all being said, what is so phenomenal and fantastic about when you are away from them and out of the relationship, 
this is what is afforded you that you didn't have before. Even if you got separated for a few weeks or a few months, that in itself is not the antidote as opposed to what I'm about to get to now. Once you've cut the cord, I mean cut the cord for good and you became aware of what they are as a narcissist. And in some cases, some have gone back even uh, before they've come to this point I'm about to bring up. The isolation that you as an empath affords you, it gives you ample time in that moment of clarity. And it's like what my bro call the, the tower moment. The tower moment is when the tower begins to crumble. Everything that you have uh, put up as a for as a, as a, to fortify this relationship, all these things that you've put up in your mind and establish that this is what we've built. This is what we've built. I don't want to ruin all that. I don't want to just throw all that away. I want to work on this. Even if they seem selfish, maybe I can work on this and we, I can convince them that we both need to work on this. So you're actually in your mind thinking that this is going to be uh, salvageable, this, this tower that you're building. But that moment that you're by yourself, and you become awakened. You awaken, and that is when you have the Tower moment. The Tower moment is when you really realize everything from the beginning to the very moment that you come to this point of reasoning that, that it was a lie, that it was an illusion, that it was a facade. And what happens when you come to this moment I'm going to say it hits you like a ton of bricks. I don't know why people say that. But uh, it hits you like... It, it hits you like somebody's punching you in the chest. If you've ever been punched. It just hits you, catches you off guard. Because mentally, you have been thrown a bucket of cold water of reality. And you realize that. I have to accept this. Now I have to learn to cope with this. In that moment, you're not even thinking about, I have to cope with this. You're still reeling from the, the reality that this is all a lie. Now you're saying to yourself, I really got to, I got to swallow this. And there is an emptiness inside of you. There's a bad taste in your mouth. There is a bitter taste in your mouth. Mentally speaking, and even physically, you have sensations that you, when it's happening, you probably can't readily uh, put a name on it or describe it. But now I'm to a point now I can look back and see that those things were disgusting. It was a very disgusting feeling. And then not to mention the fact that you've laid with these people and you know how they move. They're very, very nasty people. Very nasty people. And that's not even enough for some of us not to go back to them. Because we look at the intimacy, we say, man, that intimacy was one of the best intimacies I've ever had with anybody in my life. You know, we'll continue to make excuses often. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person for doing this. This is just like, uh, this is this is what you call a trauma bond, cognitive dissonance. It's like, I believe that I should at least capitalize or at least salvage some of those good moments. Let me go back to that moment. At least I can extract that portion of this shit show of a relationship. And in doing so, you shortchange yourself. I've had thoughts of... Uh, not, the, not the narcissist's wife that I'm still married to. Never had a thought of going back to her intimately or sexually or any other way. Uh, as I said before, it's a disgust associated with this individual that I can't even put into words because of the fact that I told you she has an autistic kid. And when people, anybody, narcissist or not, if you're hoarding your dominance and your demeanor and your damaged mindset onto your child, especially if they are a child that's challenged, that has no um, 
real, uh, uh, has no real has nothing to do with what you're going through is what I'm trying to get at. They don't have no real emphasis on why you're going through. They don't have, they don't have anything to do with what you're going through. And you're taking it out on this child. And that is a big part of it. And uh, back to what I'm saying, they, they are nasty. They are disgusting. Uh, and before this one, I'm looking back at individuals I was involved with. Uh, in years past before this one and I readily am able to recognize that these two were narcissists and because even when you made that determination to, to exit and get away from that relationship you'll find some of them they will persist they'll knock on your door unannounced they'll show up at your house uh, like this one individual uh, German girl did and I've spoken about her before uh, she went so far uh, as to, you know, I, the, the day I got out of jail, uh, which I was going to jail a lot, and that's a story to be told one day, uh, when I was in the custody battle for the six years. Uh, the day I got out of jail, I heard somebody knocking on my door, and I was in the basement doing laundry, and I almost knew it was her. They were knocking almost like they were trying to gain access into the basement. And I yelled back, who is it? And she was like, it's me. Uh, let me in, blah, 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 blah. I love you. I love you. This is just a weird, disturbed stuff that some of these narcissists will do. And uh, in that case, I think I did, in the earlier stages, when I was dealing with her, I didn't know anything about narcissists. I, too, in that instance I we went back and forth with the intimacy because in my mindset she was very slow in my mind and it's, and it's ironic how I end up with a couple of women that I believe were so slow mentally that it just didn't make sense but when I met them either I wasn't paying attention to that the fact that they were that slow or it just went over my head but looking back you know, knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have engaged with them knowing that they was that slow mentally because uh, to me, I just feel like that is not something that I'm that would interest me to be involved with a woman that is uh, that slow in the sense that they were slow. I'm not talking about so much a person that has mental challenges of, of different sorts. We're talking about as it pertains to these two individuals. And I think they're slow on purpose. Because they don't care about what you care about. And so when having conversations with them, that's probably the best way to describe it. They was not slow. They were slow on purpose because they cared nothing about what I was concerned about. That makes perfect sense. Hmm, epiphany there. So bigger point is narcissists block you from you. They block you from gaining access to you in a big way, in a real way, in a way that is necessary for you to really see that the whole shebang the whole situation is just a lie and if we had if we come had come to these conclusions earlier on we probably wouldn't have married them we probably wouldn't have had a long-term relationship we probably wouldn't have bore kids for them but that is that is a perfect world we we're not we were not afforded that uh, narcissism has probably been known since the world has began and uh, it's just God's grace that is allowing us in the last 20 years, I would say probably not even, the last 5, 10 years uh, respectively, that the world at large is very much becoming aware and awake. We've probably read this word just like we have, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Uh, you know, it's like schizophrenia. You know, these are words that people use in the world and they're just uh, normalized and they're just, um, you know, it doesn't raise any feathers. But narcissism trumps everything. Narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissists, they trump every other disorder in the world. And so that's the reason why uh, we stayed so long because the narcissist is an ace at blocking your access to you, thereby preventing you exiting as soon as you should. Because 
they keep you so confused and so round in circles to you don't really have time to attend to yourself essentially and looking back that is what um, dug the hole as deep as it got dug but don't feel bad about that if you're awakened and you're aware you are one of the few that are on your way into better things that being said bless